So we've calculated the bacon number in the previous video in Excel, which is possible, but takes us a lot. I'm not afraid to admit that it took me about five hours to come up with this solution and I'm quite handy with Excel, so this is not a solution you want. Actually, I hope that in your mind you have something like this, Whee! the no Excel alarm. If in your daily life you're making a solution that takes you more than 10 VLOOKUPs to put together, then something is off. You should really be thinking, am I using the right tool for the job? Is this still the best way to do it? So of course then the question arises, what should we use? What is a better tool to use than a spreadsheet? What about programming? Isn't it easier if you use a programming language? Because with programming you are not limited to the rows and columns of Excel, you can do anything you want. This might be a good solution for a problem where Excel is not entirely fit. However, I'm a little bit like a hobbit. I like to stay in my comfortable shire. I don't want to leave my comfortable Excel home to go to a programming language that I'm not familiar with. Of course, we could use VB. Visual Basic for Applications is a programming language that is embedded right in Excel. Maybe you've been working with it before, and this you can use is a programming language to automate your spreadsheets, to calculate things that you cannot do with a formula. This is a possibility. If you have been working with VBA before, I challenge you again to try to solve the bacon puzzle with VBA. This should be a lot easier than using formulas. However, that's not what we are going to use in this course. What we are going to use to automate our spreadsheet is a language called Python. So why Python? One of the reasons that I like to use Python is that it's currently the number one programming language taught at universities. So in a few years, there'll be lots of people around the world that really know how to program Python. It's also quite easy to learn. You'll see that in the examples in this video, that the syntax, the way you write the programming language is quite easy. And also there's a big ecosystem around Python. That means a lot of small Python programs called libraries exist in the world to solve problems. And if you have such a problem, you don't need to write the Python yourself. You can just use the programs other people have already created. So these are all reasons that I prefer Python over VBA. But VBA is also a good programming language that you can certainly use for this type of problems. But if I want to use Python, do I have to go away from my spreadsheet home? You can. You can use Python totally separate from Excel, but then you have to do a lot of learning. You have to migrate your data from a spreadsheet probably to a text file. So I don't want that. I want to have Python and Excel, both of them. Luckily, there's a solution. There's a cool program that's called Data Nitro that allows you to use Python in Excel. Much like VBA, you can just script your spreadsheet with Python. This solution, unfortunately, is only available for Windows, but there are alternatives for Mac and for Linux. We will put links to the alternatives on the course page. So let's try to use Data Nitro. Here you can see it. If you had a keen eye, you've seen that in the screenshots of one of the previous videos, there was a Data Nitro plugin. So it's right there in Excel. And if you go there, if you go to the worksheet, let's click it. If you click Python shell, you get something like a calculator where you can type formulas like three plus five, much like you can type formulas in Excel, but you can also refer to the spreadsheet. You can do something like C2 plus five, but you don't do C2 as you do it in Excel. You have to directly call the value. So you see, say, give me the cell on C2, the value and add five to it. And it's not just reading, you can also write to the spreadsheet, as you see me do here. Let's put hello in A1, and then you see that not just A1 has changed, but also all the values that depend on it. So you change a value and then the spreadsheet calculation kicks in and everything is recalculated. But let's quickly put it back to Kevin Bacon, because otherwise our nice bacon calculator is messed up. So this seems to be a good solution that might help us to solve our bacon problem with Python. And that's what we're going to do in the next video.